organisation. After you. Yeah. Um, my name's Emma Lee and I'm a resident at the Franklin Street complex. I live on Bay Street. Keep everyone in their homes that they love. No demolition is what I say. We are pe people, not old bits of furniture that can be thrown down on the street and tossed out. Our building is sound, it's pleasant to live in, and we provide mu it provides much need open space for the community, plants, animals and birds. We are a diverse community, workers, non-workers, pensioners, children, able-bodied and less abled. Many of us have lived here since it was constructed in 19... 89, designed by Paul Cox, it set a new high standard for public housing. Public tenants are a thorn in the side of Liberal government. They get in the way of their plans to privatise public assets and profit from the sale given and gifting of public land to developers and community housing providers. They say it is 70-30 split. I say it is a total loss of public assets. On the webinar, organised by Elton Consulting, no one was willing to respond to the question, who will own the land after the development is completed? We, the tenants and everyone, are asked to fill in a feedback form prepared by Elton Consulting. This is presented as a fait accompli. The building will be bulldozed and you have no rights to object. Yes, we do have a right to object. We do have the right to protect a state asset and our homes. We do not want to be forced out of our homes so that the state can hand the property to a developer housing provider of their choice. Do go to the feedback form, but don't be sucked in to comply with demolition. It is better to use a feed feedback email and say no demolition and say it over and over again. On Elton's consulting website they say our team of over a hundred staff understand it is important to tailor solutions to our clients needs. We are not a client, the state government is the client so don't let them manipulate your view I remind you, we have only till the 11th of December to respond. This proposed demolition would not help anyone on the waiting list. They ignore all scenarios of the, in the proposed scheme. The waiting list and homelessness is increasing in New South Wales and the government presses on with the inhuman, inhumane demolition. Tenants are being rehoused will get preference over housing, people housing on the list. I say, and hands off glee, say, refurbish, don't demolish. Far better to spend money um, to build new social housing elsewhere and to refurbish. It costs much less and provides just as many jobs. The complex is worth saving as it is only 35 years old and blends in with the character of the surrounds. Keep Glebe low rise. Glebe residents know the mistakes of Harold Park, Chowper Street Bay of overdevelopment. We don't need another overdeveloped site. Stop the New South Wales government destroying Glebe's character. Stop the New South Wales government selling and giving valuable public land to private developers. Keep public housing in public hands. Don't let the New South Wales give away the family silver. We love our homes. We support the resolution put forward by the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If we could keep the comments a little bit shorter, that would be great because I know there's a lot of hands up. So a little bit shorter would be optimal. Um, I would love to hear Hannah and then uh, would you first. Oh, Hannah? My name is Hannah Middleton. I'm a member of Hands Off Glee, <clears throat> and I have to say I am getting very angry. I've been through the Cowper Elder Street fight, the Cowper Wentworth Park 
Fife and now Franklin Street. And I am tired, and I think a lot of other people are, of the lies that we are hearing from the Land and Housing Corporation and the government. They treat us like bloody mushrooms, you know? Keep them in the dark and feed them bull bullshit. The first lie is, and I, I don't know if you've read it in the local papers, they're going to spend all this money on development. No, they're not. We have a letter that was sent to Emily which says that the money from selling the private units that they're going to develop is what they're going to spend to develop some social housing units. So the government isn't going to spend a penny when we have the kind of huge waiting list that Jane is talking about. We've got all the hopelessness, we've got the problems of looking after people in this COVID pandemic, and they're not going to spend a penny. They're just going to sell private housing. They mean they're so bloody unrealistic that they say, oh, people don't want to live on the ground floor, so we'll put some in the Franklin Street development, we'll put some shops in. It's just next door to one of the biggest shopping complexes in this half of Sydney. And there are shops in Cleepoint Road which are empty. And there are people like me who go out of the ground floor unit because they can't get up the bloody stairs. So they lie to us. The other thing I think is, oh, they consult us. Really, they do want to hear what we have to say. The fact that they don't take any bloody notice <laughs> sort of gets put aside. But one of the things they don't ask us is if we want this development, or do you want to move a tree? Do you want to sort of, you know, allow that bit to be moved slightly? Do you want the road to be a bit wider? All those little things we can comment about, but we can't, when they hold their consultation, so-called, we can't say, no, we don't want it. And that's what I think we have to say now. You know, it's time we've got to draw a line in what they're doing in Glee. We have to say, yeah, refurbish, improve, help, you know, tenants maybe get lifts if they need them and so on. But no bulldozers, no evictions. We're not having it anymore. Leave us alone. We're doing very well at the moment and you are lying to us and we don't want to listen to you um, hi, my name is Ruth. Uh, I'm, at, I'm a tenant um, of uh, Franklin Street. Um, ten years ago, with two neighbours, um, we created a community group. Um, Sixty people turned up to turn um, to put gates on the estate. And we got an award from the police for dropping the crime rate down 95% overnight by putting gates on because it was a fabulous plaything for the, the kids of the area. So we were talked about being a ghetto van and all we needed was security. All we needed was security. And the idea that we treated like a ghetto again and mixed housing means we have segregation again. How is that breaking up the ghetto? And why isn't the bloody eastern suburbs the ghetto of rich people? <laughs> when is, it's a political, a political language, the idea that they're segregating, and I want to know, okay, my, what, what, who does this to people during a pandemic? Who does this to people in a pandemic a month before Christmas? I watch the mental health of my neighbours with mental health and turning to substances to deal with stress at this time of year, the isolation of COVID. And we watched what happened with um, high-rise tenancy, public housing in Melbourne, how much more people are at risk. And they say, oh, this is a solution. This is a solution for you frightened people during a pandemic, we'll go high-rise, you know? So yeah, a low-rise works. I broke my leg during a bloody pandemic. <laughs> So be a volunteer here, Victoria had me in the house to help my neighbour Edwina came and helped me because we're a community. 
I don't want to know why the media is involved in this. Why isn't this on the news right now that this is a COVID issue? This is a COVID issue and people are dealing with this at Christmas. Thank you for that really heartfelt speech. And what we want to do is start to build this in the media. And I think that's a really important point. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Just behind. Oh, my name is Ian. I'm from the Leeds Society. And to my mind, there are two things which um, distinguish what the government is doing. Greed and ignorance. And um, greed, because it's just about making money. It's looking at land and trying to develop it to the max. And, you know, to say we can have three 14-storey buildings on the uh, Franklin Street site is ridiculous. And once they get that, that becomes the benchmark for the rest of the fleet. We're going to build to the standard we've already got, 14 storeys. And then to say you can build two eight-storey buildings in a heritage conservation zone where the maximum height limit is, is nine metres, 27 feet, it's ridiculous, and it's a, it's a very serious issue because it isn't just about Franklin Street and Cowper Street. Land and Housing Corporation earn a huge amount of fleet, and it's like a set of dominoes where each site that they pick off, there then will be another one. And so it isn't just two non-conforming buildings in conservation zone, this is just the beginning. And I mentioned, I've almost finished no, it, but I mentioned ignorance, and the ignorance in a way is the most distressing part of it and the part that I think we have to get out very powerfully about. Because if you look at the um, social housing that was built in this area 40 years ago, it wasn't ignorant. It was um, very well thought, up, thought out. So Philip Cox and John Richardson with the uh, Franklin Street, which has, you know, the wonderful open space. And then the New South Wales Housing Commission in-house architects designed uh, Cowper Street to fit in with the neighbouring terrace houses and anybody who's been in that building, it has a beautiful internal courtyard. It's a really classy building. Um, and um, we are presented with false imperatives. And the false imperative is if people like us say, oh, we don't want this. Oh, we have to have housing. You know, you're standing in the way of giving people housing. And it is a false imperative because it says that high rise is the only solution. But we've shown in Glee that you can do low rise input. And so, you know, we have to oppose the high rise and we have to put out the message. We want an intelligent government which plans properly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I just ask before we go, any other hands that want to say anything before we look at the resolution and we have a final summary of what we need to do? So one, two, three, and we'll just call on that. And we'll, if we, then we can, um, a couple of minutes to pick people and we'll, I'll fulfil my promise to make us finish on time. Now, just things to end with. I thought I was hearing a submission of the sorts that would be, would go to a upper house committee. And I had a quick squeeze while I was waiting. There are no upper house committees on housing or social housing. Now, at the moment, you've got an upper house where you've got the numbers posted uh, with the ALP constantly, the, um, the unspeakables. Yeah. So why not put together a proposal for a social housing uh, uh, committee? Because the sense you get is this Liberal government's got no idea what it's doing. So this is... Uh, so this is in the upper house of the State Parliament. I sit in the lower house. I represent the electorate. There's 93 of us. And in the upper house, there's 42 members. It's like a Senate there in the upper house. Now, we've currently got an inquiry up into social housing maintenance on one of the, the special committees. And so what they do, they ask for submissions from the public and then they get witnesses to come and it raises a lot of media attention and so on. That's something that we're talking about, this Communities Plus model has just started to be rolled out. And part of the problem, and I'll just say this, is that other MPs are doing nothing because they're swallowing the line. Are oh, you going to get more housing? But they haven't actually looked at the details. How many bedrooms? And also, people don't want to go. 
you know. So I think that's something we'll definitely take that on board. Obviously, in the new year, that's when that'll be something we'll look at. And I think it's a great idea and something I can help push. If you're really quick, we might get others. So you first, then you, then we might go to you and the lady. Nice and quick. Um, I'm Sally, and I'm from Downton Street. I actually just have a quick question yes. to you about this draft that we get. Yes. Um, it's been a while since I've read it, but I think it's really Now that's going to the City of Sydney. Um, you can also write to the State Government as well. The preference always is to write something from the heart. Write something that says why you don't like it. You don't have to be an expert. You can just say, my family's been here for 10 years. We don't want to go anywhere. We like it or whatever. So I always recommend you write from the heart. I'll be sending everyone an email or you can come to my office on Friday and you can get what our suggested submission is. And you write letters to as many people as you want to write them to. But yeah, and that's right. And that's right, and, and, and you can then just sign that if you want, yeah. or and then write your own comments about why I live here and so on. Um, yeah, that's right. So I will send that to everyone on Friday. You can, um, you can get it in your email, and I'll make it really clear what you do, or you can come to my office and pick up the paper. And of course, call my office any time if you want to have a chat about it. But that's a really good point. Always best to write it yourself if you can. And then we head just over here. Um, I just wanted to clarify uh, a couple of things, ask a couple of questions if that's possible. Um, first, uh, thank you to Hannah, you brought up what you found out about the money situation and where it's going. I was just wondering, do we know anything more about how much the developers are actually getting paid, etc., etc., are there resources for that? Yep, so we don't have that information yet because they haven't finished the proposal, but what we know from the other examples is the money that the developers make pays for the social housing component, they also make a profit, but then what we're going to have with the Franklin Street example, there's going to be money going back to Land and Housing Corporation, which they say they'll spend somewhere else. So we don't know the exact sum of money, but we are talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it's over 400 apartments, and a private apartment is going to sell for a million bucks easy. Now. So we're talking about a lot of money. Are you Sorry, being in the private part of that street, believe me, I've been there from the beginning and the development drove me to insanity. Oh, absolutely. When I was there, there was a council depot. Oh, it went up, there was a car park for the Sydney Morning Herald. <laughs> I had to live and went mentally insane with developers in that, in that area. But remember, 
we were going crazy, believe me. Yeah, so you're just... going to cop that. If oh, we get evicted, you're I going to yeah, suffer yeah, like that. I'm glad that you didn't come along and you might have seen one of our leaflets. Did you have some other questions? Yeah, I did actually. Um, second one is about City of Sydney with respect to the Cowper um, Street yep. um, consultation. Do we have any sense of the inclination? The um, we don't know what the City of Sydney will do. The second one I mentioned, Cowper Street, is now the city. We know they've been negotiating with the city and the city has been quite accommodating, but that's why we need to start building up a bit of a campaign and saying to our Mayor Clover Mall and the other councils, we don't want you to start giving away this place and agreeing with the Land and Housing Corporation just because they're going to give you a bit of social housing. So that's why our letters, we're going to go for the rest of the questions. Well, well, let's get to that. We just want to finish this question. Here. Any other questions? Sorry, just one final one. I'm sorry for asking so many. But I just wanted to ask whether we've thought in any of the campaigns about introducing the paradigm of compensation um, uh, around the stress that we're currently experiencing, and also if, um, unfortunately, these developments do go ahead, what kind of compensation will be given to existing tenants yep. because of their investment and everything else yep. in the community? Okay, well, that's a good point to raise. In the past, they give you nothing. Yeah. Um, everyone yeah. around gets nothing, the tenants get nothing. Yeah. In fact, you know, they think that they deserve a medal um, just because they're not sending it to Dubbo. You know, if they keep it in Sydney, they think they deserve a medal. So we've got a couple more minutes, just finally to the lady in the back. Yes, you'll see. So, this one is, uh, because uh, I'm private, I, uh, I spent my savings uh, to, I bought this uh, apartment for my retirement. Yes. I don't want to live there, you know, with uh, 24, 14 totally stories understand. of buildings. And you'll see here this that I've included the Glen, the Green Street apartment issue. It will have a severe impact on your properties. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. And we are also, yeah. and that's why I've included here all the issues about Greek Street apartments, because I think that's very important. And you need to make a strong objection. That's very important yeah. in a letter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, when I went, I worked as a real estate um, agent. Yes. Um, I sold mezzo and the top sales of the mezzo yes. at the um, Wentworth Park and Bay Street, yes. 87. So um, I know that at that time, um, the, the council permit, um, just allowed seven That's right. stories. But I didn't know now, this is 14, this is really well, the land, When we met with the Land and Housing Corporation, they said the council was very helpful. And so I don't think that the council has put up enough of a fight. That's why we're here. I don't want you to feel worried. We're here to start well, to build that campaign. Well, this is a big nightmare. I know, people. it's a big nightmare for lots of people. I agree. Can I just say, I just want to get one more person and then we're going to go to this resolution. But thank you for raising it and we'll make sure that we work very hard to reduce that impact as well for the Greek Street residents. It shouldn't happen. So just do this gentleman quickly and then we'll wrap up. Um, so my name's Ryan, I'm in the same building as Jenny. Yeah. Um, so I'm just representing the Greek Street apartments and the residents. I'm um, just wondering, at the moment we are slightly fragmented. Like, there's a lot of like society and the Street. Um, Residents and have a rich residents. 
is there a way like should we actually form like a like yeah. one strong yeah. submission yeah. or should all of us do our own part yep. as well? I think can I say I spent twelve years on a council and was a mayor and we, I saw this a thousand times. What's important is things like this are really critical. Bring everyone together so everyone has the same level of information. We don't have to have one group that makes one submission. All the different submissions are very important. If you would like to talk to me separately, I've actually got to go and beat a meeting at seven o'clock after this for another issue on the other side in Balmain. Um, but I'm happy to speak to your strata. As a strata, your strata should pay to get some professional advice from a planner and get some architectural advice and put in a detailed submission. I'm not suggesting residents go and spend thousands of dollars, but if you've got a strata, it would be a wise investment to spend a couple of thousand dollars to get a really well-argued town planner to say why this shouldn't proceed. I'm happy to talk to you maybe tomorrow, actually I'm in a committee all day tomorrow, so maybe on Thursday, I'm in a committee for ICAC tomorrow, trying to fight that, um, so maybe we can have a talk with your strata about that. But before we wrap up, because I did promise you that we we're going to finish at seven, this is a proposal that um, we've worked up that we'd like people to consider supporting. Can I ask, everyone seems to be nodding their heads about this. What I'll do with this, I'll put this on a letter and send it to the Minister for Housing and also send it to the department. Do I have anyone who would like to support this proposal? I can say moving it. So here in the front where we have a mover. And then what was your name again? Rose. Rose, just so we've got Rose's name. And over here, Sorry. we know you, Victoria. So can I ask all the people that support this resolution to raise your hands, please? All those in favour? Aye. Yeah. Do we have any against? No. No, we don't. Well, I'll declare that carried then. Uh, can I also do one other thing before we finish? Nothing exists if there's not a photo. There has to be a photo of it, right? Otherwise, it didn't happen. So I want to make sure we'll do a photo. So what we're going to do, stay where you are. We don't want people to move. Can I just conclude by thanking all of you very sincerely? This, to me, is something I'm very passionate about. I really think we can make a difference. And we need to be active, and all of you coming here has made me feel great uh, because it gives me so much more confidence to be able to press the case forward. And we have so many other.